Tesla has steadily improved the Model 3 since its market launch in 2018 in the USA, but this is something completely new. The Tesla Model 3, as we see it here, will initially only be available in Europe and not in America. So Tesla is focusing on the European market for now, and accordingly, the market launch will be on time for the IIA in Germany. From October, the vehicles will be available, initially only in the rear-wheel drive and in the long-range variant. Rear-wheel drive, WLTP range, 513 km, long-range achieves 629 km. But it gets intriguing when you examine closely, as the WLTP range is only provided for the 19-inch wheels. Tesla also provides an estimate of where the vehicle could be located. And with the 18-inch rims that come as standard, it is at 554 or 678 kilometers. The whole thing is only achieved thanks to an optimization of the aerodynamics and not thanks to a new drive technology or similar. But now we start with the design and start at the front. A lot has happened here. Not only do we no longer have fog lights, no, the main headlights have also become sig I thought to myself that could be a good clue because the Tesla can do this wild animation and then it projects the Tesla logo onto a wall with the current models and the new model doesn't do that anymore. And even if you look closer, you can see that there are only parabolic mirrors and no lenses, which leads me to conclude that Tesla only introduced this lens to make it easier to bring the vehicles to the market in Great Britain so that they don't have to develop their own lamps there. And with the decision in Great Britain to only install left-hand drive vehicles, they apparently only have the parabolic mirrors now. I found that the headlights have improved a lot through the lens as they had better dispersion. Let's see how it is with this vehicle here and whether my fear will come true and friends from Great Britain will soon only receive left-hand drive vehicles. Before we discuss Frank in front, let's briefly discuss the page and the rims. You've been seeing hubcaps all along. Tesla usually uses hubcaps on the smallest 18-inch aluminum rims. You can see them on the side now and we'll show them to you here once, that you have a sense of what it looks like when you take off the hubcaps. I know many of you who drive without them accordingly and only put them on for long distances or in winter. The wheel design has completely changed. I'm curious to see what kind of covers there will be then, because this wreath in the middle will no longer work. And this is the new design of the hubcap. That is not bad, you know, we always drive on our vehicles with the new arrow rims. They're bigger but consume as much as others. We'll show you again, you look mega chic. Here we have the Tesla kit inside. It now has a storage volume of 88 liters, which means it has grown by three liters. See that? It's fine. He may have gotten wider, but there's hardly any change in depth. But I always find it practical and it's big when you consider how flat the vehicle is at the front. Another special feature, the windshield washer fluid filler neck has moved down. You no longer have to try to fill up the windshield washer fluid up there. No, that goes down here now. I find it very, very practical and it's such a small change where you can tell that someone has thought about it. Maybe they also noticed, hey, that didn't work so well in the past. We're closing radio again and there's still tests coming. We have always noticed that in past is that. Yes, that is the beautiful closing. This is what bounces back a little bit, looks very high quality. There was a closure in the meantime that was a bit different. We have electrified our own now, but it feels good and we are currently reflecting on our journey. In doing so, we move along the side and also talk about the worked out edges because they were sharpened a bit. Not only in the front and lower area, no. This design was also continued on the side and you can clearly see more of what Tesla has planned for the structure of this vehicle here. I find it protrudes more in the lower region and the red color supports the entire thing here. Red is also a good keyword, as the new Tesla Autopilot hardware can only be recognized by this slightly red dot in the lens. We demonstrated this in the Model S long range and tested it there as the Tesla will once again receive a front radar sensor with hardware 4. In addition to the camera-based functions, we showed how this performed in everyday life with the Model S long range. Additionally, the cameras were revised and greatly improved. The sensor is now larger, providing enhanced night vision, and the camera image is better for all parking functions. However, there is still no front camera, even if it's been mentioned in rumors or shown in renderings. At the rear, a lot has also changed and I think that was the more important part because the Model 3 already looked quite old-fashioned in the lower area and with this new hinted diffuser, the vehicle looks much more muscular and mature. 
The tail lights, which are also new, give the vehicle a wider look and have a really nice signature. Here we just display all the blink elements, I don't believe you've observed that in every place yet. The turn signal is well integrated, the brake light is now the entire tail light, no longer just partially, and the reverse lights have been relocated downwards. Makes sense on the one hand, because they then illuminate better and no longer interrupt the rear light design. And of course the fog lights must not be missing and they have also been moved downwards. I believe that this new light signature appears very good on the vehicle and in reality it looks even better. I was not quite sure what to make of it from the initial press photos, but that is just how it is. The execution is truly well done. The CCS connection is still hidden under the left lamp and we continue to charge with a max charging power of 250 kilowatts, the standard range slightly less and the battery sizes have remained the same. When you look at it from the back, the vehicle is well done with the Tesla logo running through it. The design language is also taken from the larger vehicles and the spoiler without the carbon option extends a bit further upwards, which I think will also serve aerodynamics. There are still 1.6 tons of towing capacity. We still have to talk about the trunk. This one has also increased by 30 liters compared to its predecessor, so quite a bit of volume was added there. We still have the relatively deep storage area underneath. This is all very, very nicely lined up and organized. Feels even a bit higher quality. And as usual, we have these deep pockets on the side. You can then load very deeply to the back. I find it a bit difficult that unfortunately you can only use this space up here to a limited extent. And here I also miss a bit of coverage towards the rear speakers. And what I would also like is a way to fold the seats down directly from here because for that you have to go forward. But uh, that works and then you have even more storage space here in the trunk. What you just saw is that the new tail lights rise up. That means you only have this recess here. The lower lamps come into operation. They are similar to a type of emergency lamps. They begin to illuminate when you have the tailgate open. We already know that from other car manufacturers, especially with all the continuous light strips, etc. That has established itself to some extent. This could have been revised in my view, but it is a very, very deep step. So if you had pulled up the tailgate here, similar to a Polestar 2 or a BMW i4, so that it opens completely, that would have been a step that would have already heavily affected the body. Accordingly, Tesla has chosen to leave this here. However, at present, we have two dampers here. The tailgate therefore lifts significantly simultaneously from the right and left, closes very, very securely and completes the rear completely. When here at the front with the bar, we must mention the aluminum application underneath as it's really chic. Never heard that in videos, worked out beautifully yesterday, looks more high quality. And then here are the materials next to it. Everything is very valuable. And of course we have a complete ambient lighting inside here, which can be adjusted either in automatic mode or in on and off mode and in all possible RGB colors. New steering wheel, not just Model S wheel, but small wheel from Tesla Model 3 and Y models, newly shaped, replaces old Model S wheel installed here. Completely different design. It means I can put my fingers in here better and it also has soft buttons now, but we'll examine them closely. I believe we don't need to delve into the fact that activating the turn signal through the classic lever is much more intuitive and easier than using these buttons on the steering wheel. Now we have them, so we take a closer look at them in detail and I must say they have been significantly further developed because when you press on them here, you not only hear a clearer click than with Model S and X, no, the button also feels even more like actually pressing a button and that also applies to the flasher and all buttons on the right side. The button area was also, in my opinion, well designed. Developed further over time from the Model S, but as of today, it is not yet at the level where the Model 3 is now. The horn on the Model 3, compared to the Model S and X, is still on the steering wheel and not as a button. This pleases many and simplifies everyday life when you have to honk occasionally. But now let's shift our attention to the interior itself and start with the seats. These have been thoroughly revised. In my opinion, they have better side support and better cushioning and now come with ventilated front seats as standard. There is no option for the back, but I believe it is truly excellent to have ventilated seats as standard in this price range. And they truly possess a great deal of power. I believe this is the identical technique employed in the Model S and X also. And especially with the black interior and the abundance of glass, that is very practical. We see the side parts here again in detail and also the button. 
this is still a classic button and not like in the Model S and X, which is more of a soft touch button. We will stay a little longer with the design of the interior because here this slightly dotted aluminum application below the fabric element in the eye panel also continues in the center console and this has been fundamentally revised. Not from the design but from the way one deals with it, we now have analogous to the Model S two sliders forward and backward. Behind the front is the usual deep storage compartment and under the rear we have two cup holders the center armrest has now become slightly wider and flatter, and it no longer holds magnetically with a push button as it used to. Moving ahead on the center console, we also have the typical two wireless charging pads for smartphones, and the iPhone mini now charges flawlessly. There used to be some problems with the height of the inductive charging coil, and then we still have to jump over this grid in the spar in the B pillar because I was very surprised when I saw the first photos and I thought Tesla has now integrated the new speakers there. But no, there are microphones hidden there. I discovered this information for you because in the place where microphones used to be, there are now the hazard warning button and the corresponding soft touch buttons for the lights, but there is also the emergency switch for the gear selector lever. We will come back to the new functionality later, but if it fails, I could press the soft touch buttons up here. In the interior, as usual, we have the large panoramic roof, which is divided into two elements and also houses the rear window. This is always a bit challenging with the rear view. The center display has increased slightly. Instead of 15 inches, we now have 15.4 inches. Actually, it's not really noticeable, but if you compare it to the predecessor, you'll notice that the display borders have shrunk because the housing itself has remained the same, but the display has increased slightly. Now let's move on to the ambient lighting, and this essentially forces Tesla to perfect the gap dimensions and the zero gap at the door. Accordingly, this decorative element has probably also shifted slightly inward, and here you can then select all RGB colors that you like. There are presets available, you have the option to save some of them, and then you can also adjust the entire thing variably in this color circle as you like and as you please. You can either turn off the ambient lighting, keep it permanently on, even during the day, or have it automatically turn on and off depending on the lighting situation around the vehicle. Ambient lighting color is stored in user profile. Key card must be placed on wireless charging pad, not on center console. No longer on user profile, only on wireless charging pad. And now we reach the gear selector lever. This is exactly the same as the Model S. Swipe back for reverse gear, swipe forward for drive mode and press the park button to park the vehicle. There is also the neutral key downwards when in settings it's permanently displayed, otherwise no software changes. I don't find the controls disturbing. I can build much more on that and see it as more future-proof than the blinkers. I'm really curious to see if they will also prevail in the next generations and will continue right away in the second row. In terms of space, hardly anything changed. I have just as much space to the knees in front. If the front seat is all the way down, it's hard to get your feet under the seat, but I have enough space in the footwell and when the seat is adjusted like it is right now, I can sit quite comfortably. I also find the leg support very comfortable because they don't hang in the air somehow, but you can really sit well here. And recently there is an additional display here. We know from the Model S and X, we showed you the details there. It's smaller, but has essential functions, which we'll discuss again shortly. Before that, let's briefly talk about this center armrest here. This is now the complete middle seat. I personally think it's pretty cool because this division always ensures that the center armrest normally ends here. Now it is significantly longer. You have two cup holders, which are nicely framed and also rubberized inside and hold magnetically up here. Tesla is known for clever locking mechanisms, which are usually somewhere with magnets, and I find it quite practical that it simply clips in here, because in the Model S, there is an extra button on the back of the headrest. You couldn't always squeeze him, at least not with us now, and I think it's very cool that this is made so simple here. Uh, there is still no pass-through, we have already seen that from the back, but I think you can sit and tear very comfortably here. That has hardly changed. Also, here are things like the lamps, which are now touch sensitive, but the positioning and so on is like before. They've wandered a bit, but the lighting here is really good. And I think it's great that we also have ambient lighting back here. That's something we often criticize, like MEB vehicles from Volkswagen. Stops at front. Front is well lit, lot happening. Sometimes at back, you have nothing. No backlight, empty back. 
I always find it sad. That's how it is. Okay, people in the back are like, I don't know, second class, and that doesn't have to be. And also the choice of material here at the back is identical to the front. This is all very nicely soft and designed here so that nothing rattles and so on. I personally like it. A few revisions that are as easy as, uh, for example, down here, that this element is now a bit firmer, but those are just details. I find it pleasant here, and we still need to talk about a few things in the interior, and for that I'll jump forward. Keyword sound, I can only say that, because in the interior we now have 17 speakers and two subwoofers instead of the previous 13 speakers and one subwoofer. Standard version has 9 instead of 7 speakers. Here we have long range and we'll try out how the whole thing sounds. Because Tesla usually has a pretty good sound and I really wanted to find out how it sounds in the new vehicle with two subwoofers. We utilize Apple Music where higher bitrate corresponds to better quality. I logged in briefly. Let's check the sound. So what is mainly built here in terms of bass is really impressive and I also think that the high tones do not distort even at high volumes and sound very very good. Tesla has now also installed a display in the rear of the Tesla Model 3. This is not quite as big as it is with the Model S and X and I still don't find the positioning optimal. However, it's practical if, for instance, one can control the AC or even adjust the seat from the back of the vehicle. And that's where we come to the chauffeur mode of the Tesla Model 3. This is probably quite interesting for the Chinese market right now. Here you can then relax and move the passenger seat forward to be chauffeured in the back right in order to have maximum legroom as a result. The display is also used for additional functions. This allows you to control audio playback, at least play, pause and skip, and you can use the streaming providers in the background, which has the advantage that now, thanks to the latest software, you can also move the sound to the back only. Until now, the entire vehicle always had to hear the sound from the rear display, and especially on long journeys, this can probably be very annoying for parents. Now it has been revised. The passengers in the front and simply can't hear anything anymore or only even less. And we must discuss the glove compartment. You messaged me on IG asking to listen if this sound really sounds strange. And yes, the glove compartment makes a strange sound when closed, but this is also due to the fact that it has been completely redesigned as it is no longer the entire lid that opens upwards. Subjectively, it also appears somewhat smaller and the whole thing is now held in place thanks to magnets and they just sound the way they sound now. A minor modification or Tesla has silently incorporated this new feature and it can be identified either through visual observation or by reading about it in the user manual as there is currently a blind spot LED which, in contrast to other car makers, has not been relocated to the mirror but is positioned in the speaker grille in the lower section of the A-pillar. I find that relatively smart and can't wait to test it in the driving experience. And then we also have to talk about the issue with the doors because Tesla has introduced new anchorages in the lower area of the front and rear doors. Not only for crash stability, no, the entire thing also provides enhanced insulation when the door fits more securely in place. And although that does not have much to do with it, the doors sound much fuller regardless of whether in front or at the back, it's no longer that tinny sound or what you often hear from other premium manufacturers nowadays, that light rattling where you feel like the door weighs nothing anymore. Tesla has made revisions to that. This is a truly rich sound. It sounds of high quality and exudes a sense of luxury. And yes, it sounds dumb when a door sounds high quality, but I think many of you know what I'm talking about. Because if you've ever had an old Tesla door somewhere, this is actually something completely different. But that should have been it for the new Tesla Model 3. I'm really excited about your feedback in the comments. I hope we discussed all important points for you that you were interested in, that you asked us on Instagram as questions. And now I can't wait to drive the vehicle. So definitely subscribe to the channel.